wrong button. <laughs> I'm very relaxed, as you can tell. I'm stretching. Oh, good day, mate. How you going? Yeah, good, mate. Good, good. Are you in the uh, are you in the CrossFit box or are you at work? Where yeah, you I am. From? I am, mate. I'm in Sean's office, and there's a bit of water damage in here, so we're we're loving it. We've had some big rain up here, um, but yeah, it's yeah, it's a it's a sight for sore eyes. I can tell you that. <laughs> How you doing? Being a recent dad, how's that all? <laughs> good, mate. Good. Like it's it's awesome, mate. Eh? It's awesome. Like the lack of sleep gets you a little bit, especially with training and like recovery and that. But yeah, mate, I love it. It's fucking, it's great. Love it, mate. I and on know. that topic too, fucking women, they're they're fucking terminators. I tell you, <laughs> they're holy shit. My but emotionally is, or just <laughs> oh, just just with, like with a kid, like they're just they're just like robots. It's insane. They just love it. What they're capable of is pretty pretty phenomenal. Oh, um, mate, mate, ridiculous. Like, from when we had our had our kid, I was like, oh, well, that's the end of my missus, she's dead. And then, like, the next day, she was, like, bouncing off the walls. I was like, far out, yeah, this is next level, next level. But, yeah, yeah, it's awesome, mate. Fatherhood's great. How's she going? She's awesome, mate. She's, yeah, she's sweet. <laughs> yeah, good, good. Do so you still have to, do you have to, like, um... Rocks his paper. Who's getting up? And do you do you play off being a CrossFit Australia's fittest man and be like, mm, I'm not taking this one. I got to train tomorrow. No, no, no. Um, we have a pretty good deal. So she gets up through the night. I put him to sleep, um, and then she'll get up. He's he's waking up once, maybe twice, um, and then I wake up or pretty early in the morning and I'll pick him up because um, he usually cracks it when I'm there, and then. I'll take him into her and then I'll go to work from there. So, yeah, it's yeah, yeah, yeah we've got a pretty good deal going on. She gets up, which is awesome. <laughs> but, yeah. It'd have to be, um, you're, you're in proper training now, wouldn't you be? Yeah, sort of, sort of. Um, the season this year is a little different. Like, um, in previous years, like, because we have, like, the Open coming up, um, in previous years, we, you, like, you qualify for the games through the Open. But this year, it's like a three-stage process to get to the game. So it's sort of like top 600 from Australia go to the next, like, like to the next stage. So it's like, well, I don't really need to win this as such. I need to make sure that I'm ready um, in the in-person comp, ready for the game. So yeah, it's good. But he's still playing the card. He's still going all right. I mean, it's it's comp season now. No waking yeah, up yeah, past yeah. eight o'clock at night for me. The kids oh, yours no, between I, eight and eight. Nah, nah, I sleep like shit anyway, to be honest, mate. Like, uh, yeah, I, like sleep's one of those things that I, I miss a lot of, um, and I always have, but yeah, it's, um, but yeah, definitely training and all that's on, on point at the moment, so it's, it's pretty good. So, so, the, so the CrossFit, sorry, mate, go. So I've got to break in, I've got to, I, I know you, you can direct me away from going down rabbit holes. But I've got to figure this out, right? Because sleep's like the scientifically the most important part of being an athlete. Realistically, yeah. it's, it's super underappreciated. Like it was, it's slowly getting more and more recognition. But you're the first student in Australia, and you don't sleep properly. How the fuck does no. that work? Oh, mate, I don't know. I don't know. I've never really slept the best as such. Um, like I'll wake up numerous times through the night. Like before. Um, we had my son Boston. It was like people were like, "Oh, get ready for sleepless nights," and it's like, "Oh, well, I'm up, it. yeah, four or five times a night anyway, so it's it's fine." Um, what is it like? Injuries or pissing or? Mate, I just like I'll just wake up and then be like tossing and turning and um, not be able to go back to sleep, and then finally get back to sleep and fucking wake up again. I'm like, "Fuck, this is bullshit." <laughs> um, but yeah, it's yeah, and then I guess you like you just sort of adapt to it and. Yeah, you're sweet. But, Mate, you've but got yeah, to, definitely. CBD, I think that just became legal over the counter in Queensland, didn't it? CBD yeah. oil? Oh, okay. Cool. I would drink that yeah. shit every night before bed. Thank you. Yeah, see right. how it goes anyway. It's, it's well, actually, don't take anything I say without fucking investigating <laughs> it first. It's amazing for you. Don't get me wrong. Like The, the medical, yeah. the, the benefits of helping you sleep and, and relaxing and recovery is fantastic. Whether or not you get in trouble... Um, through CrossFit drug testing, I'm not sure. 
shouldn't be. Most athletes. I, I, I don't think hard. THC or, or CBD should ever be condoned as like a a performance. I don't think anyone that sits there and smokes a joint and goes, "Fuck yeah, I'm going to go and do a sick crossfit work." Oh, CBD completely different, mate. Hundred percent would recommend it for athletes for recovery. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm pretty sure most of like the top guys are on it. Yeah, um, you see them always posting shit. So, mate. Oh, yeah. It, Drug test aside, THC should be recommended <laughs> to athletes as well. It's fucking amazing. Yeah, um, yeah, man, I agree. But yeah, we could debate this all day. Um, yeah. Everyone knows my standpoint on it. I mean, look at look <laughs> at I, I look at the UFC as well. Like they're they're fucking elite level fitness, and most of those dudes to recover are either smoking yeah. weed, eating it, or or just taking THC oil, which is good to go. And then CBD, it's kind of blown up when it became legal in the states their go-to athletes to sponsor are all around the UFC. Um, yeah, uh, mate, yeah. Didn't they just make it legal in the UFC to be... I th- um, even THC. I know CBD's always been okay. I think THC's now yeah. um, okay. Yeah, that was, I was listening to one of the podcasts the other day. Asada was... They're either not testing for it or they just don't give a fuck anymore because it's like... Yeah. It's not a performance That's, enhancer. It's a recovery nah. aid. Yeah. If you want to go into a fucking octagon... High as a kite, you are a psychopath. <laughs> yeah, you're a maniac. Fuck. Yeah, you been getting in an octagon. Whatever. Fuck that. <laughs> I'll watch from the outside, outside the octagon, watch people punch and kick yeah. themselves in, in the face. But mate, See, but sleep. Br- Sorry, I'm yeah, stepping go, on you, man. I'll, just, I'll talk about sleep for the next four hours, so you better cut me yeah. off. No. Sweet. That, there's, mate, you, I mean, I know you're, you're still young. How old are you? 26, 27? 26. Yeah. yeah, 26 and fuck, 11 days. So you can probably oh so you, yeah you you could probably do another four years of not sleeping and just getting by on training like a maniac and fucking <laughs> being young, yeah, um, but definitely you'll find like this is old man advice now, um, oh, you find like I can't Bad do chat. it anymore. Army back in the day, no sleep was fine. Now I can have a f- time off the gym. I can eat like shit every now and then, but nothing fucks my life up more than sleep. Yeah. Oh, don't worry. There's been times where. Um, like I haven't been at work or anything like that and it's been like I've been in an off season sort of thing just chilling out and you get like 8 hours of sleep and I'm like holy fuck this is insane and then the following night I'm like oh sweet another 8 hour sleep here we go and it's like up every hour you're like fuck man this is shit Um, so yeah it just depends on the night really fuck yeah we might have to get you um, test we're actually talking 10 minutes before we came on here about getting more sleep based meditation things on the app we might have to use yeah. you as a guinea pig, see, but oh, perfect, and then when, when you win the CrossFit Games, we'll claim it was all because we <laughs> helped you sleep. Yeah, yeah, it's all you, all you got. <laughs> yeah, that's what we want to hear. There's a, there's a clip for you, Keegan. <laughs> so, uh, but you were talking about like fuck going in the the octagon. But I would say fuck going and doing CrossFit, let alone <laughs> going to the CrossFit Games as an elite level athlete. Why the fuck did you take up CrossFit, mate? So to be honest. Um, I started with rugby league. My whole goal uh, when I was younger was, fuck, I want to play rugby league. I want to, like, I started rugby league when I was five, I think. I played it all the way through. My dad's fanatical on the game. Um, and played it all the way through until I was uh, 18, 18, and then, um, or 17, in our last game. So in our last round game with school, I got knocked out really bad. Um... And then the following season, it was like just a roll-on effect. Every time I'd get touched on the chin, I'd be fucking, yeah, lights out, see you later. And then it got to a point where, because I was at uni at the time, um, got to a point where I had fucking memory loss and all that sort of shit. I was like, fuck this, I can't do this. Um, And then, yeah, and then so I took a a couple of weeks off and um, the guy who was our trainer at the time, he owns CrossFit Townsville, Stricker, he, uh, he was like, hey, man, you want to come try, try some CrossFit? And I was like, always talking to him about it because I've always been interested in that side of it um, or that side of training. And then he was like, yeah, come come have a crack. And then, yeah, that was all she wrote. That was where I just sort of stayed. And, yeah, it was good. It was good. But, yeah, it was definitely, definitely a massive change from trying to tackle blokes to trying to put a barbell above your head, definitely. But it was it was good. It was good. I, I, yeah, like there's sometimes that I sit here and I'm like, oh shit, 
did I choose the right thing? And like you look at what, um, it's like more so the money side of things. You look at like what just even fringe player NRL players are making. You're like, fuck, fuck me. I've been crowned fittest man two two, two years in a row, and these guys are fucking rolling me and dosh. Like, yeah, it's yeah, it's it's insane. So, but yeah, I wouldn't change anything. It was it was probably the right decision for definitely my brain and my body and all that sort of stuff. Maybe maybe not my body, but definitely my brain. Hundred percent, yeah. mate. In ten years down the track. Go and go and get IQ tested against the boys that kept playing footy. <laughs> yeah, that's the. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully there's a hopefully there's a difference. Hopefully, the lack of oxygen <laughs> in my brain doesn't <laughs> affect too much. But yeah, keep you going the yeah. way you're going, mate. I think the money will sort itself out too. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully. How long? What's the longevity of a CrossFit? Uh, did you, were you an early adopter to CrossFit, or was it in its full swing um, b- before you jumped on? It was in its full swing, like it was, um, yeah, it had been rolling for a couple of years. So I started like just training in CrossFit in 2000 and, 2013, I think, 2013, 2014. Um, and it was just like dabbling in it, like just having, like just doing it for a bit of fun. And then I seen something like, like, like anyone else does in, uh, in the CrossFit world and they, they see something they're like, oh, fuck. I could probably be all right at this. Um, like something, I, it was some sort of CrossFit video with Rich Ferning or something like that. And I was like, fuck, I'm going to make the games. And usually I hear people say that and I'm like, like now I hear people say that. I'm like, fuck, no, you don't want to do that, man. There's a lot of work in that. Um, but yeah, it's uh, like, that was how I started. I was like, all right, well, let's, let's see, let's see where we go with this. And then it was like a three or four year process um, to actually, or well, yeah, it was it was a four year process. Two thousand eighteen was my first year as an individual, and yeah, and then sort of just rolled on from there. But it was like four years of of full training, just trying to get better and better, trying to make sure I had no weaknesses, and then yeah, we went from there. That's still pretty quick, isn't it? Like I I started paying attention to CrossFit when I first got out of the army, like end of two thousand eleven, start of two thousand and twelve, and we had I, I had a health food restaurant in newcastle um that that half of our crowd were crossfitters and i was yeah. watching it. no shit back then i was like this could be my new thing and i was 25 because there was the the complexity of the movements hadn't reached where it's at today nowhere near it you just needed to be a fit dude any kind of professional sports person could roll over and go i mean mate winning the game's a different story but getting to regionals i was like I was, yeah. there's a couple of mates who were going down to regionals every year and i'm like I'll fucking have a crack at this and then <laughs> didn't obviously because i'm fucking too lazy but like within the space of like two years after i think that was because 2008 or 9 was the first year they they shot videos of the games or that might have even been the first games um two years later they start bringing in muscle ups as like that's a standard thing that everyone can do yeah. and and then every year after that there was more ridiculous shit coming in for you to come in in what 2013 14 and go three four year turnaround that's a fucking massive effort because yeah, from yeah I, like so so 2018 i went to regionals um 2017 i was teams um so i was still there but i was fuck, fat kid hitting the piss and being a dickhead um and then i sort of sort of switched things a little bit and i was like right hey, let's give this a red hot crack and see what you actually got um and then 2018 i went to regionals and I missed the games by two points. And yeah, and then from then I was like, fuck this. Like, uh, I've been doing this properly for a year. I can I can match it with these boys. And then the following year, what they changed everything and, um, well, the whole format and all that sort of stuff. And yeah, and then I, I, like I, I won Australia. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was, it, was, it was crazy, but yeah, it's cool. It's cool, like the turnaround um, like the four year turnaround was, uh, man, I just put that down to like, I, I'm, like I knew what I wanted and I just went and got it sort of thing. Like I just worked my ass off for it and that was it. So okay. is, is it a, so like predis like what you did when you were a kid, um, like for training wise, you see dudes, um, I think I spoke about this before, like, uh, one of the boys over West was a, like a state sprinter and. He was a fucking beast of a dude, probably up to national level, and he just couldn't 
it was like he didn't have lactic acid. He was phenomenal in his ability to, to keep pushing himself. And it tra- transferred over for him when he was training for, for selection. Um, do, you, do you think the fitness that you accrued when you're young, when you're a kid, while your body's still growing, when you f- like physiology still sort of adapting and growing, do you think that gives you an advantage or do you think that that gave you an advantage moving over uh, as opposed yeah, to like definitely. someone from a cold start or definitely mate I, I put a lot of so um, I put a lot of what what I've achieved in CrossFit and all that sort of stuff to my dad like my dad when I was younger like playing footy and all that he was like mate you're a fucking short little fat kid you need to learn how to <laughs> be tough um, take a hit and be able to give a hit and so behind our house or my childhood house is like a park and I remember that park my old man getting me down there and being like righto you got sprints because you're fucking slow and you're fat so you need to run faster <laughs> and yeah mate like there was those times I'd be fucking crying and screaming and all that sort of shit and he'd be like get the fuck back on the line let's go again um so I think I think that mindset of like and then it ended up turning into yeah well righto dad let's see let's see if you can break me this time. And it sort of turned into like a game that I'd play with myself as um, trying to beat him. And then that's just transferred now over to, over to CrossFit and all that. Like, um, yeah, a lot of, a lot of what I had was through my dad and, um, and then being, then knowing that I was fucking shit and having to work to try and be something or try and be better. So I think that's transferred into CrossFit. Definitely. Um, I always knew what like a back squat was and a front squat and a press and all that sort of shit growing up through footy. But, um, mate, when I first jumped into my first CrossFit class, they were like, righto, this is a snatch. I was like, I don't know, I'm, I can't do that. <laughs> um, and, mate, even trying to overhead squat with a PVC pipe, it was like, like a, yeah, yeah, it looked like a car crash. But, yeah, and then it just was like, um, I was like, righto, well, these are the things I'm shit at. And I remember writing out a list of shit and I was like, righto, these are all your weaknesses. And I think it was fucking pretty much every movement across it. I was like, okay, we need to make sure you do all of this <laughs> once a week. And the shit you're really bad at, make sure you do that twice a week. And then, yeah, it just flowed on from there. And yeah, now we're here. <laughs> so, yeah. Mate, your dad needs to write a book on parenting. <laughs> that is the lost art. Yeah. The lost art yeah. of parenting. Every child psychologist, there's none listening to this podcast, so don't worry. But everyone out there will be going, that is terrible. Don't ever do that. That is how you breed fucking successful pe- anything. Yeah. Uh, like my, like in saying that, my mum and dad were fucking full of love. I can't, I can't knock them on anything. But yeah, my old man was, yeah, he, and like after a footy game, I remember I fucking hated getting in that car. I was like, oh, fuck. Even me. Like, my coach could have given me, be- like, best on ground. I get in the car, and Dad's like, oh, well, you fucking did this wrong, you did this wrong, you did that wrong. <laughs> and you're like, fuck, you know. Oh, yeah, oh. It, was, it was funny. Yeah, and I so remember no. the couple of times, uh, uh, the couple of times he was like, I'd get in the car, and I'd be fucking, oh, what did I do wrong? I bet you I can beat him to it. I'd be trying to think of things, and I think there was, oh, there was only a couple of times he was like, you know what, you actually fucking did all right today. You did well. And he'd just drive, and I was like, fuck, yeah, that's awesome. Um... <laughs> But yeah, like yeah, he, he he has a lot to do with the mental side of, um, or the challenge, I guess. So yeah, mate, that's a really uh, I've actually seen a lot of. Sorry, you go. Yeah, I've actually never told him that either. So that'll be funny. <laughs> ah, good. No, it's a recurring theme in a lot of highly high performing successful people is they are their own, like they're they're the biggest critic, and that like if your old man instilled that in you from day one, that you have to. Don't fucking, I mean, pats on the back are good, but yeah. look for where you fucked up, fix that. That's the way to keep getting better. I reckon it's gold. And we just don't yeah. see that for kids anymore. You're not allowed to do that. It's nah, partici- mate. Participation nah, mate. trophies everywhere. Yeah, that's it. Everyone gets a fucking medal. Even if you come last, it's like, no, you're shit. You come last, you don't get a medal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Oh, anyway. preach. <laughs> so what is it? The What is your, that leads into, I was sort of like thinking, what the fuck is your internal dialogue when you're in sort of deep water in a workout? Like when you're getting drowned in a workout and you're like, I'm not going to, someone's right next to you, they're nearly beating you. Like what is your internal dialogue? How do you fucking, what's, what's your <laughs> self-chat? 
Um, mate, my, my self-chat is, uh, like, I, I've done a post before on it, um, but yeah, my self-chat is different to most people. Most people's like, oh, you're doing well, I keep going, all this sort of shit. Mine's like the the fucking angry, angry coach on the sideline, you've just dropped the ball, like, he's just, he's just India the whole time, um, yeah, like, if it's, say, if it's, like, a heavy lift or something like that, going through my head is, like, you're not fucking getting this, you're shit, you can't do this, fucking give up on it, and then, like, and then it's me trying to, I guess, I can talk in my head with myself and be, like, right, well, fucking watch this then, um, and that's the same, that's the same in a workout, it's, like, yeah, it's the same sort of thing. You can't go faster. Yeah, oh, fuck, right, then. then. Let's go. And then, yeah, so it's yeah, it's definitely different to different to most people, but, yeah, that's that's how it rolls. It seems to work. Do you think people get it confused? Like, so they're just confused about what what is... So these are elite-level athletes, like, you know, you, and they're like, fuck, if I... They go into a workout and they're like, fuck, it's raining. I can't be fucked doing this. Like, oh, well, I don't have the mindset for it. I might as well just give up. If they yeah. knew the mindset that was happening in your in your head, you know, I think that would give people mad props to keep going and be like, oh, I'm having a shit day, but I'm going to do it anyway. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, <laughs> maybe, hopefully. Hopefully not. Hopefully they all just, they're all just fucking shit and I beat them all. <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> No, like it, like I think I think in CrossFit, like CrossFit in itself, like we're not fucking, like all we're doing is exercising really hard. If anything, if you were to explain it to someone, oh, what's your sport? I oh, do these gym movements that are put together in a workout really, really fast, and people would be like, why the fuck do you do that? Um, like it's there, there's nothing real, I guess, real sexy or anything about it, especially training. Um, but yeah, that grind just sort of. Sort of tickles my fancy a bit, so yeah, yeah, I enjoy it, mate. I disagree. I, I mean, everyone says that <laughs> all the haters, right? Because because cross, cross is very polarizing. Um, it's like being a vegan. Um, they're the two but vegans and CrossFitters are the two. If anyone wants an analogy of how to divide a room, that's the go-to. It's like, <laughs> oh, just tell them you do CrossFit or tell them you're a vegan. Yeah, and, and all the haters all out there. Yeah, <laughs> normally, yeah. <laughs> vegans, um, all the all, all vegans talk about, about this fucking. All vegans talk about not eating meat. All CrossFitters talk about fucking CrossFit. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but all the haters are, are, are like, oh, what? You, you're the best in the world at going to the gym and working out. And like, yeah, that's a hilarious argument. But there isn't a sport Over on the planet that fucking makes sense if you break down what you're actually doing. Like playing footy, you're grabbing a piece of rubber, <laughs> you're grabbing a balloon and running it up the end of, the, of, of a grass fucking square. <laughs> There's not a lot to that. Until you put a billion dollars yeah. worth of marketing behind it and tell everyone it's about massive hits. Um, yeah. and, and again, like I, I used to do it across it, so I fucking enjoy it. But you sit down and watch CrossFit games, you can't you can't pull yourself away from the TV. Like there's a whole yeah, bunch of waffly true. shit between events. But sit down and watch an event, it's fucking exciting watching fit people go hammer and tongs doing shit that you can't do. I mean, that, I reckon it's gold. So yeah, there's yeah. there's there's a CrossFit's a sport, mate. It's a sport. <laughs> yeah. Oh well, yeah. Anyway, yeah. I got a funny story about that when I was trying when I was trying to get an exemption to go over to the games. I got told that um, from the people doing the exemptions with fucking COVID and all that that uh, CrossFit wasn't a sport, um, and I needed to find a real sport to be able to go overseas. I was like, "Fuck you!" I remember his name. His <laughs> name was Will. Fuck you, Will. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. Mate, they've got fucking badminton in the Olympics. And yes, I know there's some Asian countries where that's a high-paid sport. <laughs> but you get Matt Fraser's net worth last year versus the Australian badminton team and tell me which one's a professional athlete. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, he's, Tableton. He's, fucking hell. You could, yeah. you could make a, a list a mile long of ridiculous sports <laughs> in the Olympics. That's true. But, Do they just keep... Because they, they're putting real fucking... Um, I think I think the guys who organise the CrossFit Games, they, you see them sneak in new workouts that people can't train for. Like the first time they did a, a plate cat, a plate run, you know, like with webbing and shit, or they'll just, the swims, open water swimming. You see them. I think the guy who organises it is a sadistic fucker, and he's like, watch these super fit dudes who break themselves doing whatever that, and then he's like, this will fuck them. Watch this, and yeah, then they're like, he, fuck he, it, someone um, else I've got to be good at. 
So the guy who programs all of it, Dave Castro, he's like ex-military, I think Navy SEAL or something like yeah. that overseas. Um, and yeah, he's got a, he's a bit twisted, I reckon. <laughs> and some of the shit he comes up with, you're like, why the fuck? Why are we doing this? But, but well, all right, right oh, then, let's give it a crack. But yeah, yeah, you definitely have to be different to program some of the shit he programs. And then I guess you have to be just as different to be able to do it as well, so... I yeah. think that's what um that's what helped it blow up. Like there's a bunch of factors as to why it blew up, but a big big part of it was the fact that he was throwing out. It, it was essentially he was putting to, together a selection course. Like on selection every year, it's very similar, but they throw in shit that they know no one could see coming. Fucking let's let's get all these people that are highly super fit, highly trained, get them out of their comfort zone and just fuck with them for a little bit. It's a hundred percent how he programs CrossFit Games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just the just there's no sleep depth and all that sort of shit, but yeah, it's not yet. Similar, yeah, not, not yet. yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh fuck, right. I'm ready for it. I'm ready for it. <laughs> oh, Is there anxiety pre what, like because they don't release the when do they release the workouts for like the games? Is it the day? No, a couple of days day before, of yeah. So just they mainly do that just so fucking idiots don't do the workouts, like because um, you would get some people that. Um, who would be competing at the games who'd be like, oh, fuck, no, well, let's do the workouts and let's see how it go. And you're like, what the fuck, you guys doing that? That's dumb. (laughs) Um, Mm. But, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's mainly because of that. So, yeah, but no, there's no, I don't really get too anxious about competition in CrossFit. Not until, like, you're, I guess, you're standing on the floor, the clock's, like, counting down. It's, like, three, two, I'm like, oh, fuck, this is going to hurt. Um, and then it's go and I'm sweet. Like, but yeah, beforehand it's just like, oh, well, it's just another workout. Roll with it and see what happens. So, so, so there's no your anxiety is understanding how much you're going to hurt yourself. You don't you don't get performance anxiety like, oh, I better beat these motherfuckers. Nah, 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 uh, nah. I'd, um, yeah, my my stuff is like, oh, let's. <laughs> this is like if say it's. Thrusters and pull-ups, it's like, fuck, righto. And they're like, just achievable rep schemes, and you're like, oh, fuck, this is gonna, this is gonna fucking mince my legs, and my arms are gonna be toast by the end of this, and I'm probably gonna be on the ground, carrying on like a pork chop, but, oh, well, let's, let's have a roll and see how we go. It's more the, you know how much something's gonna hurt over my placings and all that sort of stuff, I, um... Yeah, I back my work beforehand to be able to look after that. But yeah, like I sort of treat it like an event at a time and knowing how much I guess each event's going to hurt, I guess gives me more anxiety than my placings at the end. So, yeah. That's pretty impressive, bro. For someone as young as you are, like normally that kind of composure doesn't really come till you've, you've been in at the top of a sport for a long time. I'm well, trying to break down the psychology. It sounds like you... Like every every sport I've ever played, and again I've never been to elite levels like that, but there's always I've always tried to pick out the main people that I needed to beat. Like I'd be like that dude, I've got to own that dude, and then I'll be fucking alright. Sounds like you've got your own little schizophrenic fucking conversations <laughs> in your head. So it's you versus yourself the whole time. Yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Like like obviously going into a comp, you know who's going to be like at the top of the leaderboard and all that sort of stuff. And you know who you're going to be competing against. Um, when you go in, but yeah, I don't, man, I don't give a fuck who's next to me. Oh, <laughs> like, like the, the goal is trying. How's your headspace go? Where, where does your head go? Say, say there is like a ladder event or as an event where you can physically see people. I mean, I, I haven't seen you compete, so I'm not sure if there's ever been anyone in front of you, but does that <laughs> there has been. fuck there has you? Been. <laughs> there has? Yeah. Does, yeah, does yeah, that, yeah. How does that affect your headspace? If someone's like getting a, a, a an edge on you? Oh, he better not fuck up. <laughs> Cause, yeah, that's, yeah, that's what. Yeah, that's where I'm at. As soon as someone's ahead of me, it's like, oh, okay, well, you've gone this fast, champ. Let's see if you can maintain it. And if you can't, then you're fucked. <laughs> so, yeah, that's solid. Is, is there is there something going on? Uh, like, is there tactics in your mind where you'll be particularly good in an event, and you see someone trying to compete with you, so you literally take them in a deep water, you're like, come on then, and just egg them on to push above where they're good at, to just burn them out? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, there was one year there was some, 
there was some squat cleans one year, and it was like, I can't remember the workout, it was muscle-ups, wool balls, and some heavy hang squat cleans, and they were at like 100 and... 100, 102 or something like that and like that for me is like that's my fucking jam like that's my that's my bread and butter write that workout down catch you later um and i remember doing the first round and we did our first set of muscle ups i got to the wall balls and i threw the wall ball and it fucking went up and come down and smacked me on top of the head and i fucking lost my ball i was like what the fuck what's going on here um, and then when I got it, and by the end of the wall balls, I was already caught, caught, caught back up to the pack. And there were some boys that were walking to the bar. I, I think it was like seven, seven or nine hang squat cleans. And I was like, all right, boys, let's see. Let's see who wants to go here. And so I went unbroken. Um, my whole plan the whole time was to go unbroken and everything. And one guy stayed with me, and I was like, all right, champ, let's see what you got next round. Fucking next round. Yeah, he was blown to shreds, but... But yeah, like that's that's definitely, um, definitely like there's some some workouts you go into and you're like, fuck, right? No one's beat me at this. Let's like let's have a crack. And then there's some workouts you go into and you're like, fuck, this guy's really good at this. You need to fucking have half a dip here. And then that's where that's where my thing with like, fuck, this is gonna hurt comes in. Um, but as soon as the workout starts, especially if I'm like, if I know that like some of the movements in a workout aren't my jam. I'm like, okay, I need to be smart here. And there may be people that go ahead of me and all that sort of shit, and I'm like, fuck, they can stay up there. But if they've chose the wrong fucking strategy, I know I back my ability and back my strategy um, to catch them. And I would say like nine times out of ten, it fucking plays perfectly and they blow up and all that sort of stuff. And then you just sort of mosey on past them and it's like, see you later. Um, but yeah, it's, yeah, it's <laughs> Mate, I'm, so regionals this year, Wollongong, is that correct? No, it's actually, they changed it, it's in Brisbane. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Oh, well, we'll I come know. to Brizzy. We'll come yeah. to Brizzy. Yeah, so, so they changed the, yeah, Torian, which is a big gym down in Brisbane, they're running the, um, I guess the regionals this year, so, so yeah, it's, yeah, it's Yeah, right, we'll different. be out there in force, Brizzy's full of bloody veterans, mate. Perfect. Who's um? <laughs> is there any name like who? Who's on your radar at the moment? Not to give them a, a fluff up, but who should we watch out for or trip over in the car park on the way into the games? Who in, mate, the, Aussie, in the Aussie comp? Mate, there's some good fucking young kids coming through. Hey, like um, there's a guy who beat me um at the start of last year. Uh, Jay Crouch, mate, he's he, he's killing it at the moment. Like um. And then there's like the old guys, that, which are like Brendan Swan and Royce Dunn. Like they they'll always be there. Um, James Newbury, he'll be he'll be always at the top. Um, even though I think he had fucking some knee surgery or something like that, which is insane. He's a freak, but breaks his back and then three months later competes and you're like, fuck, bro, how the fucking vegans, mate? Sounds vegans. natural. Yeah, fucking vegans, mate. That's what he is. Like, vegans really? in sunlight. Yep. Oh, yeah. edit that bit out. I don't want any pro veganism on this podcast, vegan. <laughs> <laughs> nah, for hey, some fuck, people it just works. Fuck, I'm no not... vegan. Fuck that, mate. <laughs> <laughs> nah, some people, I mean, there's a lot of people out there raving about how good it is, but I tried yeah. it for two weeks, mate. Got super sick. My body yeah. relies on animal products. Mm, yeah, I, yeah, I tried it for one meal and I was like, fuck, where's the meat? One meal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I went and found some chicken and she was good to go. <laughs> uh, we did a yoga course in Byron Bay at the start of last year. Two Was it two weeks? Vegan, mate, it nearly <laughs> killed me. I broke, I got an autoimmune response. Like, I was feeling as full of fucking legumes, which is not good for anyone, I don't believe. No. Um, but, nah, I wouldn't do it. So there's a couple of young blokes. The old the old dogs in the Australian circuit are still yeah. kicking around. Yeah, um, they're just yeah, they're, and Rob mate, Forte is on TV. Is he is he still kicking around? Who Rob Forte? No, he's um, uh, he's Jay's I guess coach. Um, so yeah, he's got like mate, he's got it all. Jay, he's I think he's fucking quit his job too by the looks of something I seen the other day. He's full time athlete mode, so that'll be that'll be interesting. That'll be cool. Mm. Cool to see where he's at now, um, but yeah, mate. There's like there's some good 
there's some good Aussie, like some good Aussie athletes from the male side. Um, so it should be should be interesting. I'm I'm keen to see where where everyone's at, what everyone's been doing. I can suck mm. at home for a while. So um, yeah, we'll see. And then what about? What about when we get to America? Oh, sorry. They've, they've, they take you're allowed to gamble on CrossFit now, so I'm trying to get some insider information. <laughs> um, America, where who? I'm assuming in the men's this year they're still predicted to be strongest country. Who? Now that Fraser's out of the way, who's? Mate, there's fuck. There, so anyone who makes the games, this is the crazy thing about the CrossFit games. Um, and Fraser's spoken about this before, and so has Rich Froning, the two guys who have won the most CrossFit Games. Um, anyone who goes to the CrossFit Games can win the fucking CrossFit Games. Um, like, everyone's fit. Everyone's got pretty much the same abilities, give or take some strengths and weaknesses. It's all about fucking what's between your ears and how good you look after your, uh, after your body through, like during the week on who wins. And, mate, Fraser's a psycho. Like, not a psycho as in training or anything like that. Mate, that... That guy will, <laughs> or to give you an example, that guy fucking won't, or a couple of months out from the CrossFit Games, he won't eat with a steak knife just for the chance that he might cut himself um, and that'll put him out of training. And I'm like, fuck that, mate. Like, how the fuck do you eat steak without a steak yeah. knife? Like, how the fuck do you cut yourself while eating <laughs> yeah. steak's a question? Yeah, man. Like, mate, Mom. that's intense eating. Mom but yeah, that, like, man. that's, um, yeah, that's his, like, he, he's just, he just gets everything. All the little percentages are on performance and recovery and all that, he's just to a T, and that's why I guess he's the best ever. So, but yeah. Do you think that's been vetted? Like that, that's psychological warfare. If you if you get to be like you win one CrossFit Games and then everyone's like, oh, what do you do different than everyone else? And you're like, I don't even fucking cut my steak. I don't even use a steak knife. <laughs> like, do you reckon yeah. that's do you reckon that's legit or he's just fucking with people? Nah, man, I reckon. I reckon <laughs> you reckon? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like, so, mate, he's, so, so I've met him a couple of times, and he's one of, like, he's a bloke, if he fucking had a beer, you'd go for a beer with, like, he's that sort of guy, um, from my experiences with him, and, but, like, just his mindset on competition is, like, it's, it's on a different ballpark, and I guess, mate, you look at all the best, like, you look at Jordan, um, you look at Tom Brady, all of those guys, they're the best in their sport, and then, you actually like sit down and have a conversation with them and they're fucking different as um and yeah i reckon he's the same he's no different to different to those guys so mm. yeah yeah i mean i was to do to be at the, at the top the way he was for for so many years is fucking he's a different different yeah. dude mate he's mate he had the fucking ultimate missus too his missus would cook clean wash Everything for him, like it was. I was like, I was like, to my. Do you want us to like, cut that sound bite out and give it to you, mate? Hey? Do you want us to cut that sound bite out and give it to you so you can play it to your missus? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, she'll love that. No, 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 she, <laughs> mate, don't, don't get me wrong. I'm not knocking on her. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, um, but yeah, she's like, like even some of the stuff like she would do for him. I was like, fuck it now. I was like, I probably wouldn't ask you to do that for me. Like talking to my missus. Um, yeah, it was, it was insane. Like he just, his whole process was sleep, eat, train. And that was all he did. Um, and I guess it paid off for him. So yeah, it's good. 100%. <laughs> Do you, um, and you don't sleep, so that's all right. Yeah. Fuck. Eat and train. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's a perfect segue. Well, what, what, what's your diet? Mate, I've cleaned my diet up. Fuck. Like shit loads. Um, when I first started CrossFit, I was under the mindset of, like most most people who start CrossFit, you're like, fuck, I'm chaining a fair bit here, I can eat what I want. And mate, I was rolling tubs of ice cream, like one kilo connoisseurs, like, fuck yeah, this is, this is my jam. And I was like, fuck, I feel awesome. And then, like I'd look at myself on my video and I'd be like, fuck, that's not me. Like I'm fucking shredded, look at me. And then... I'd like watch other videos and be like, fuck it now. And then I was wondering why all my gymnastics was so hard and all that sort of stuff. And um, so I don't have a nutritionist or anything like that. I don't count calories. I don't count macros, nothing. That was never why I got into CrossFit. But like, and then like looking at that and looking at my performances that year, I was like, okay, something needs to change. And we all know what needs to change. 
It's not your training. It's definitely what you're putting in your body as fuel. Um, and mate, now it's like I've got it down. I eat the same thing every day. Wake up in the morning, I have three eggs and some bacon um, and some overnight oats. Um, and then I won't eat. So that's a, I get up at 3.30, so that's then. And then I won't eat until 11, 12 o'clock. Then I'll have um, some veggies, some rice, some tuna, and some other meat, like some chicken or something like that. It's mainly chicken. Um, and then I'll come back and train again. And then, like before training, I'll have like a shake with some BCAAs and, um, and an apple and maybe a muesli bar or something like that. Um, then after training, I'll have a shake and some sort of like GoPro yogurt or and then a piece of fruit and another music bar and then when I get home at night it's just a normal dinner and yeah that's it like and that seems to seems to work for me now like it's like definitely a whole lot cleaner than it used to be um but yeah like the, when I first got into it I was like and I was like right you need to make a change with your diet because obviously your diet's not perfect um I was like, I never want to be the person who counts macros and counts calories and all that sort of stuff. I've I've looked into it definitely, um, because like I've seen like oh, fuck, all the all the best guys do it, and then, um, but yeah, like I don't want like if I fucking if me and the missus are going out or me and my mates are going out, we're having a couple of beers. I don't want to be like fuck trying to fucking log it on my phone and shit like that. Like I want to go out and fucking oath, mate. Mm-hmm. Get anxiety about what you f- you've got plenty yeah. of other things in life to worry about, yeah. And then macro can't fuck off, yeah, yeah. I, I know that's just my excuse, mate. I would be the same thing, I would get into CrossFit purely to eat tubs of ice cream, yeah, mate. Oh, don't years. worry, don't worry. Once the competition side's done, mate, I'm doing CrossFit to eat what I fucking want. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's yeah. that's, that's, I mean, that's one of the things I notice watching the, the games every year is uh, what are those hot chicks from Iceland? The all the daughters they they always make jokes and brag about how much junk food they fucking eat during the games and I completely understand that you're burning so much energy you need to fucking refill calories right but yeah. pumping your face full of garbage even pizzas like not that bad but surely that has an impact on your performance mate if I mate if I say so- if we go out and we have some beers and some pizzas and all that and I go and train the next day, I feel like fucking dog shit. Um, like I've cut so, um, like I don't eat a whole lot of bread and all that sort of shit now. Um, cheeses and all that as well. Milk, I might have a yogurt, but like that's that's about it. Like I don't have fucking cups of milk or anything like that. But if I have a cup of milk or fucking some bread or something like that, I just feel fucked. And then like pizzas and and then like the list goes on fast food and takeaway and all that sort of shit. If I have that, mate, like I feel fucked. Don't get me wrong, I fucking love love me a good Macca's or pizza or something like that. Like, um, but yeah, you definitely notice the difference um, in training and definitely competition. Competition, I I'm more stricter in competition than I am um, like through the year. Even though you're fucking burning. Like ridiculous calories on to a tea. I don't want to like get to the next day and feel like like a fucking bag of bricks. I'd rather be able to like, like get through the next day. So yeah. yeah, I mean, like, and that that lines up with the the you not caring about counting calories and and, and macros because um, that's like the go to model for for people in the fitness industry is like you want to sort your diet out, start counting your macros. And that's, you're counting like the, the fucking macronutrients and calories you're putting in from a pizza might be fantastic to replace all the calories you just burnt, but you fill yourself with fucking inflammatory foods full of preservatives, it fucks your guts up and you do not, your body just does not fire properly the next day. That's what no. I couldn't understand. I'm like watching these literally the world's fittest people yeah. brag about the garbage they fucking consume. I'm like, there's no yeah. one that sat you down and given you a basic nutrition lesson. No, nah, I think I think a lot of that is at the same time. I think a lot of people. I, I I don't know what it is. People like to be like, "Oh fuck, I'm in this spot and I'm fucking eating shit." And it's like, no, you're not. I've seen what you eat. 
You is don't it need like uh, it's like Arnold Schwarzenegger and Lou Fregno in the seventies, right? He's like, it's just I give him the bad advice. Like, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. It's just fucking with people, man. Yeah, yeah. I, I, like, like, honestly, I think I think that's that's what it is. Like, mate, those girls are fucking to a T um, with their nutrition. Like, they got their fucking phones and their scales and doing all that sort of shit whenever you go anywhere. So, um, for them to say that they eat shit during competition it's like maybe they do but i don't know i've never been around them when they're in competition but i know during training mate, they're to a t um with their macros and all that sort of shit and they get freaking mm. out about it and but yeah fuck that i'm not into that nah. um, eat eat until you're full eat real foods and you'll be you'll be sweet fuck yeah <laughs> that is that is a time stamp you've ever heard one eat till you're full and eat real food Yep. No more Maccas, mate. Cut Maccas away, for fuck's sake. Yeah. Mate, delicious. everyone, oh. mate, yeah, but everyone, like, people are like, oh, no, I don't I don't like the taste of Maccas. That's bullshit. Everyone <laughs> likes the taste of Maccas. I can't, mate. I can't eat, yeah? like, if I get, nah, because it's the, only the the bread. Um, I, again, although, I mean, I'm old as fuck now, but uh, I ate, ate it to death when I was younger. Um, now, if I go to Macca's, I can taste the preservatives in the bread, like and yeah, right. instantly. If Even I eat Macca's, chips? say again, the chips. Like if I was to rock in in the house right now and be like, "Yeah, mate," I'd eat the fuck out. Well, no, yeah. like, I've been eating pretty strict keto for about six months now, and I haven't had Macca's in it's in that time. But before that, yeah, if I was driving the freeway and I needed to get food, I'd sneak <laughs> in a bit of Mac. Chips are fucking delicious. That's because yeah, they are. Yeah. Just salt on a bag potato. of garbage. Yeah. But bag of delicious taters, mate. Yeah, Big bag of poison, oil poison and- <laughs> preservative flavored fucking potatoes. Yeah. Nah. I don't know. No, I don't, mean, man, sorry. I do agree. It's all it's all fucking it's all shit for you. Um but yeah. Cause that's Definitely that, I mean, after a night on the town, mate, there's nothing better than a fucking Big Mac and <laughs> some chips <laughs> mate, me and Max have done some numbers on some cheeseburgers in New Zealand <laughs> yeah we we had a whole I think we 57 I think we, we ordered 57, 57. cheeseburgers <laughs> yeah. it was between a few of us but... <laughs> that's impressive fucking hell I remember cheeseburgers used to be the go to food to sneak out bush because they last this is preservatives they last 11 days in a, in a mat after you buy them <laughs> in a six empty sixty six <laughs> stuff. It's like a it's like a tennis ball container, but it's a sixty six stuff with cheeseburgers. Cheeseburgers and rolls of dip. But <laughs> but that's I mean that's the argument for the for the macro cat counters is a Big Mac on face value going on macros only. Like you've got carbs in the bread. There's a bit of fucking lettuce and salad on there, meat and cheese. Right. That that yeah. should be. Food pyramid, yeah. ticking boxes, right? Good to go. But then you get a microscope out and you have a look at the fucking preservatives that they put in there. And, like, it, it Maccas should be able to sort that shit out. They're getting pretty good because they're so big and they've got so much money. They're starting in Australia anyway. They're starting to make some healthier yeah. stuff. But I eat one cheeseburger these days and the next day I get a fucking rash under my eye. Like, that is, really? how, that is how my old man immune system works. Now, anything that my body doesn't like... Any chemicals I put into it, I'll have some form of autoimmune response within that's 24 insane. hours. And that's how I is can that tell. because you, is this is this a placebo mind over matter, and you've actually cracked it, and now you can create a physiological change by thinking how badly it's <laughs> made? Well, I don't know, mate. Like ever, I don't know. You, that's what that is. <laughs> well, Mac is every time. It's a fucking like rough skin under my eye. If I have. Oh, mate, I shouldn't tell anyone this. If, if hypothetically I go out and it's a big weekend, we have a few beers and someone forces a durry in me out, I'll get a rash <laughs> at the top of my ass crack, like from one cigarette rash at the top of my ass crack, like every time. And that's like my body saying, you're an idiot, mate. What'd you do it don't for? Do it. I'm like, I don't know why it picked those two spots, my body, under my eye. Underneath your eye and like, yep. <laughs> connected, mate. The connected wires go at yeah. the top and at the bottom. <laughs> Positive and negative. <laughs> Yeah, uh, right. At least everyone will know now. Anyway, all, everyone Perfect. listening to this podcast, when they see my ass crack hanging out, they're like, stop smoking dairies, man. Yeah, fuck. You had a dairy on the weekend? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, diet's pretty solid. Yeah, yeah. I finally got that sorted. Um, 
and yeah, that was sort of like the last little, I guess, building block and in, in everything I did. Like I knew that I knew I could train. I knew like like training never affected me. Um, my mental state was you have a bag of rocks each day of training. Like you wake up with a bag of rocks fucking full. Every session you do, you take a rock out. By the time you go to bed at night, fucking got an empty bag, you beauty. And then you wake up in the morning, the fucking rocks are back again. Um, yeah. And that was that was sort of like my mindset with training was, as long as you empty a bag of rocks, it doesn't matter. Like everything will work out. And then like now it's moving more into like the nutrition side of things and um, just making sure like, <clears throat> like real foods, if you can pick it, if you can kill it, eat it. Um, and like, yeah, I eat bags of like fucking quick rice on the in the microwave and all that sort of shit, but um, that's just that's just for carbs. So, um, but yeah, and that seems to work fine for me now. So, so yeah, it's good. Magic. Is there any athletes on full keto, strict keto in the games? You said there was like, there's vegans. Is there full keto know. athletes? I think there's only one vegan, and that's Newbury. I don't know how the fuck he does it. Um, but. Yeah, he I lies actually, to I people, mate. I think that's how he does it. He, he's looking for that <laughs> vegan Arnold Schwarzenegger documentary funding. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I'm vegan. Yeah. Fuck off, champ. <laughs> Roll with a fucking big, big leg of steak or something. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, actually, I don't know with keto. I, don't, I know that... Yeah, I don't know. There's a bit of a contradiction there for a long time because, I mean, um, fuck, what's his name? The... Glassman, I don't know. Are you allowed to talk about him anymore? Is he a, a CrossFit racist? Yeah. No, oh, mate. I don't know. I don't know. That oh, we can go into that in a minute. I won't. Well, that's a whole yeah. can of worms. But he he made like the he basically promoted the paleo concept to the world in a plain and simple way. Going cut the bullshit out, eat whole foods, makes sense. Yeah. The contradiction was that high performing athletes, every single person going to the games, is smashing himself full of carbs, um, yeah. which oh, doesn't really right. fit. Yeah, which yeah. which doesn't really fit in the paleo model, but I mean, people have got to understand there's a difference in in eating for longevity. Like you may more than likely move into once you get out, you cut out some of that bullshit, like the the yeah. quick rice off the shelf and that when you when you're not competing. But when you're a high performing athlete, you need fucking ten times as much food as normal people, so you got to pump calories and carbs in there. I think- yeah, uh, mate. I like I know once I'm done, once I'm done with CrossFit, there will be there'll be a massive change in one, the way I train and two, the way I eat. Um, and three, what I do in a day, like my day at the moment is consumed with like outside of work hours. It's like fucking training. Like that's what I do. Try and try and fit food in here and there when I can. And like all the other times training and trying to trying to get ready for the next session. So, um, but yeah, definitely once I'm done, there'll be a massive shift. I'm not going back to, eating what I want, it'll be, um, well, we, we've always eat, ate and ate pretty clean um, at home and all that sort of shit. It's just like on the weekends when you're like, fuck, yeah, it's time to it's time to lash out, but, yeah. Right, Adam. We won't, we won't, yeah, you, you're not a massive fan of social media, so we don't need to go into the Glassman story too much. <laughs> Is he still around? No, he's done, mate. He's done. Like, I, like he started off into the sunset with his millions and... Yeah, oh, so he it was his choice to say "fuck you," then I'm out. Or was no, it- uh, no. Everyone made him. Or there was a whole lot of people that were like, well, all the gyms in the world were like, "Nah, catch it later." We're no longer a part of CrossFit. We're just going to go functional fitness, um, whatever. And and then he was like, "Okay, well, I guess I better sell." And maybe like the guy who bought it, I think he got it for a steal because like the company was fucked because of mm. old mate and his post but um what was the I, I mean i heard about i i didn't really i didn't hear the post i didn't hear the i just heard that they got dropped for sponsorship because someone said something ra- vaguely racist or something so when that um when that floyd stuff was going over on over in in the states and um like black lives matter and all that sort of stuff he got on there and he said something like um, because it was like an overlap of COVID and, and the Black Lives Matter stuff. And he's like, um, like the Floyd stuff was 
all the all the joke and all this sort of stuff and he was like it's it's just like Floyd nineteen and then like that blew up and then all these people come out with all all of what's been going on at CrossFit HQ and all this sort of stuff and um yeah, then it was sort of like pack your bags and catch you later. Sell your business and yeah, sail off and mate yeah. mate I don't know what he's doing now but he, he, he would have well and truly enough money for the rest of his life. To... <laughs> Whatever the fuck he wants, mm. mate. I think that's what he's yeah. doing right now. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I read that post and it was, I read it from the angle of he's referring to the overhype in the media because he's like basically saying COVID's a big fucking media hype, this thing's a big media hype, not not downplaying the, the negative effects of killing people, but yeah. I don't know, mate. Like, it's... For a sport that realistically he, he kind of generated out of military and police special forces training styles, I I feel like the whole fucking I'm offended should not really yeah. be part of CrossFit. It doesn't really have a place. And it looked yeah. to me, I mean, I, I, again, I don't, don't know the politics of how the organisations run, but yeah. as soon as every fucking person who, Matt Fraser stayed the fuck out of it. Um, yeah. I was tracking him. I'm like, ah, so when you're super successful and you don't need to get on the bandwagon of this shit going around Instagram, then you just stay away from it. That's fine. He was a legend. I thought everyone else is like, I need to get my two seconds of, of fame out of this. I'm yeah. Gonna- and so, mate, I'm like our gym here at CrossFit Townsville, like it's like we're, we're all about the community. We're all fuck, like our goal is not to fucking make CrossFit Games athletes. Our goal is to have Susie and John make sure they don't fucking end up in a retirement home. That's that's our whole goal. And that's the, like, and would that still run if we weren't called CrossFit Townsville? Fuck yeah, it would. Um, like, that's not going to change what Stricko's goal is here and um, what our goal is here as full-time staff. Like, it's still trying to help people. Um, my goal as an athlete is to fucking be the best at this shit. And because this guy wants to go be a fuckwit and make comments and do whatever he does behind closed doors. I, I like that doesn't affect me. I want to fucking be the best at this shit. So like, if he's going to be a dickhead, then that's on him. It's not on me. And uh, that was my whole, I guess, mindset on it all. Like, yeah, you've done the wrong fucking thing, but I want to compete. And if that, like there was another, there, there was going to be another route um, for all of us to compete against each other, all the best, and there was like fucking prize money and all this sort of shit, but it just wasn't called CrossFit. And I was like, fuck, sign me up for that. I'll be a part of that. As long as I'm fucking where the best are, I don't care if it's in CrossFit, out of CrossFit, down the fucking street, let's, like, let's see who the best is. Um, but yeah, it, yeah, it did, it did blow up massively. And I think it blew up massively, like, it started off with all, all these comments on social media and then, people from staff and all that sort of shit started coming out with like sexual assault and all this and um yeah like it made it just snowballed into this thing that i was like oh fuck okay well again this doesn't affect me this is his shit like it's not my shit my shit's to compete his shit's to i don't know be the fucking owner i don't care what he does Mm. Um, I've never met him in my life, so or that's I have, good. Hey, that's, but, you do you, boo. I'm just going to be the best. And yeah, like that. <laughs> and I think that was that was Fraser's mindset on it too. Like he he was like, oh well, what? but he, he's him. He's his own man. Like I'm not going to tell him what to do. Like I've done what I want to do, and he's doing what he wants to do. So we'll just keep the ball rolling, and I'll compete where everyone is. Um, yeah, I think that's funny, hey, with that, like, people get a platform and then they feel they have to fucking use it, like, yeah. now your platform, it's like Ricky Gervais at the at the Golden Globes and he's like, Shh, come up, accept your fucking awards, thank your agent, thank your gods, and fuck off, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and you see these people jump in and they're like, what'd you get famous for, like, uh, well, I'm the best in the world, I'm, a, you know, one of the fittest people in the world, like, that's cool, so you know nothing about any other yeah. socio-political no, like, you're no, not a I'm politician. Fucking throw my hat <laughs> yeah, you're not a politician. You know nothing about the environment. All you do is fucking sit in a gym, do some pull-ups, and swing off a barbell. Like, like, I, like I can't make like judgment on people who I know fucking nothing about or a situation that I'm not involved in. Like, it just doesn't. 
yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, I guess I'm very much like it doesn't affect me, so I don't give a fuck. So, which is that the best outlook? Probably not. Will people like that? Probably not. Um, but at the same time, that's me, and yeah. <laughs> Well, I think it's, it's not just if it doesn't affect me, say, but like the, the way it sounds like you're coming off is that if you're not a fucking subject matter expert on the topic, I'll just stick to what I do, and that is lift heavy yeah. things really quickly, and yeah. I'll shut the fuck up about everything else. I think that's a yeah. fucking sick attitude to have. Yeah, yeah. yeah we, fell into the, we fell into the loop and sort of got us back. Like, there's some stuff that was happening in the media, and we started getting into mudslinging contests, and we're like, whoa, we don't do this. Like, this is not the whole concept like just stay in our lane and be good at being proactive and being high performing stay there and let everybody you know what i mean like you, yeah. you sort of you can get tempted to go down that and use that platform you know what i mean but yeah and i and i think a lot of people do and a lot of people on social media like followers and all that they love it like they love when someone big puts their two cents in like do they know about the matter well their fucking post looks like they do um and people love that, and me, I'm not, I'm not one of those people. I'm, yeah, I'll stick to what I know, and what I don't know, then I don't fucking know. So, <laughs> so <I'll laughs> hey, you are stoic and wise beyond your years, mate. <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't equate, doesn't equate to not having. You should have 150,000 fucking Facebook followers. Facebook, how old are you, mate? <laughs> oh, Instagram, what? <laughs> oh, my MySpace is killing it right now. <laughs> yeah, no. Right, uh, mate. I, um, we've done food, we've done sleep. Well, we've talked about sleep. You don't sleep, but that's good. <laughs> Train a lot. Do you do any kind of meditation? Um, not really. I do a lot of, or well, I guess I do a lot of visualization. Like um, going into a comp, I'll like I've run through. Like if I know the workout, I'll run through how that workout's going to roll. Sit in the corner, fucking shut my eyes and roll through how I think the workout's going to go. Does it always go that way? Fuck no. But then I always think about how, like, the worst-case scenario as well. So I'll have the best-case scenario where I fucking blitz it and win the whole, win everything. Um, then I'll have the worst-case scenario where I'll shit the bed. Um, and, yeah, I think that, like, I guess, is that meditation? Probably maybe 100%. a little bit. Yeah. But yeah, more visualization sort of stuff. Um, where I'm actually visualizing what's going to happen or what I think is going to happen. Um, and yeah. And is that is that something that that someone's kind of taught you through, or is that something you just no, uh, mate, not really. Hey, not really. Like I, it it used to start in the shower. Like I used to like all, all every time in the shower. Like, mate, shower thoughts are insane. Um, Depends on. What? Stop it. I know where you're going. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, oh, well, mate, you have those thoughts as well, but um, my thoughts are a whole lot different. Like, it's just, like, I'll be like, okay, well, I can sit in the shower, water's running. I'm like, okay, well, this comp's coming up. What's going to happen? And I'll have a look at all, all, like, I'll remember back to all the different workouts and the workouts I've done and training and all that sort of shit, and I'll sort of, like, piece little bits together and then... Yeah, we rolled from there, and then it sort of turned into, um, like, a couple of days before the comp, I'd, like, okay, yep, okay, yep, this is this is how it's going to go, this is what's going to play out, and then it turned into, right before the event, I'd do the same thing, like, I'd, I'd sit down, like, after I've warmed up and all that sort of shit, um, I'd go sit down and just chill out and be like, okay, there's this movement, that movement, this movement, um, this movement you're pretty strong at, this movement you're fucking shit at, and then the last movement everyone's good at. So how are you going to get through this? And then you sort of base your strategy around that. And then, and mate, my, my biggest thing with visualization and all that, if I don't fucking know something, I'll go and ask someone. Um, and I have a pretty good team here at CrossFit Town. So like I bounce numerous things off my missus, um, like with, with workouts and all that sort of shit. And half the time she'll look at me and be like, I don't fucking know. What are you going to do? This is what you do. And then... Other times she'll say something really good and it's like, fuck, yeah, okay, sweet. And then I have like a whole lot of other people that I'll be like, what do you think about this? Do you think this is a good plan? And then if they're like, uh, yeah, let's roll with it, then I'll like put that into my visualization as well. And yeah, it's, yeah, it's a whole process to it. It's just not rock up and compete. So, yeah. That's solid. Is, 
Um, what you're saying about like you've you've got good movements, bad movements, uh, like everyone does. Um, at that level of competition, when you've got people like you know the top five fittest people in the world that are fairly fairly similar in, in physique and ability. Do you think it is a physical advantage that people are better at certain things or that you have literally, like there's some, you know, like you've got your exercises that you enjoy and you're like, no, I'll fucking kill this. Mm. Is, it a, is it a good movement, bad movement, or is it like just a mental, you're like, this is my fucking movement, I like it, or I don't like this fucking one? Um, I think it's a bit of both, hey, like you have like the things you start off with, like when you first start anything, you have the shit you like and you're like, Okay, I like fucking lifting, lifting weights more than I like doing burpees. Most people mm-hmm. are like that. Um, and then it's like, is okay. there anyone that fucking eats burpees up in the? It's like, oh yeah, burpees my favourite. <laughs> I actually really like burpees. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah, like yeah. Not the sadistic cunt. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, like if there's. Like, the, like, definitely you have the movements that you're like, oh, I find these fun. And then you have people who, I guess, as, uh, I guess your, your amateurs are such, like, they'll be like, oh, I'll just do the shit I'm good at and fuck the shit I'm bad at. Like, I'll just kill the shit I'm good at. And you're like, well, yeah, okay, well, then that, you are going to be really good at that. But then if burpees come up, you're fucked. Um, and then you have the yeah, people who... Yep. Then you have the <laughs> Then you have the people that are... Like, top-heavy, bottom-heavy. Like, the people with big legs are always going to be good at squatting. People with fucking massive upper bodies are always going to be good at pressing. Um, and then it's trying to, I guess, not be the shittest at it and be just sort of mediocre at everything. So, but, yeah. Long, long-limbed, long like, tall people are, are they're stereotypically fucked. fucked, aren't they? Yeah, they're fucked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cross it's a short man's game. Um, and... Like, yeah, that was my problem with burpees, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm a bit taller. I was <laughs> you're, four, you're four foot four, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's why they threw in the board paddle and the swim. It's like, all right, let's give these lanky fuckers a chance. And yeah. then day two, you're out of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, catch us later. Um, yeah, mate, there, there, there have been some freaks that have been really tall. Like, so Brent Fikowski, he's yeah, he's a big motherfucker. Um, long, lanky, and... He, and, and, like, you see some of the stuff he puts up and you have a chat to him and he's, like, fucking struggles with everything pressing because he's got to fucking press double the length of anyone else. Um, but he just he just rolls with it. He's a freak, mate. He's out of anyone. And then there was, from Australia, there was Chad McKay. Um, he's, like, an original back in the day. Mm. And he, um, same thing, he was, uh, like, a bigger, longer guy and just a freak at everything, so... Like, you get your freaks, but generally speaking, it's, like, 5'8 five, five, to 5'10 is, like, your range, and then between 85 to 90 kilos is um, your range there, and it's, like, anyone above that is, well, you're sort of fucked. Anyone below that, you're sort of fucked. Um, anyone taller, anyone shorter, like, it's just, yeah, sort of, like, that specific in there, so, yeah. Mm. Yeah, but I mean, every every sport's got a body type that is kind of the go-to. Long, long, lanky people are long legs. You're a runner. Long, long upper body. You're a swimmer. Um, yeah. CrossFit kind of came along to give the fucking midgets a chance. I guess. <laughs> yeah, it did. It did. Imagine me trying to play fucking basketball. That'd be fucked. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's that's that's. The- See you, mate. Cause he died. <laughs> no, I'm good. A lot of um try and avoid discussing race in sports because it's a fucking hair trigger conversa- topic for for a lot of people there's not a lot of black people in in fucking crossfit is that do you think that's to do with marketing or, or is that body type because you know. go running like every every fucking olympic olympic sport the um well the, the americans dominate almost anything anyway but sprinting uh athletic sports african americans generally dominate all of them um, yeah, we have fast getting... twitch, slow twitch stuff. Yeah, I, mate, I don't know why there's like you look at like you can look across the field. Like there are some African Americans and all that sort of stuff in the sport. I don't know 
why there's not more like maybe is it like crossfit is sort of like the sport like people who sign up to a crossfit gym it's not like your regular fucking ten dollars a month snap fitness it's like a premium price and all that sort of shit but at the same time it's like anyone can fucking do crossfit you got a wall you got a fucking floor you do a crossfit Mm -hmm. um there's something to hang off um there are some freaks african-american um or there's one guy chandler smith and he's He's a fucking animal. Like, his chest and chest to back is, like, take up this room. Um, and, yeah, he's he's a freak. And I, I honestly don't know why there's not more of them there. Like, you think about the ultimate sports people, that's fucking that. Like, mm. they can jump, they can run. I mean, that's, yeah. that's the and answers I've had. The answers I've had in the past, which which make a lot of sense, is is if you're a, a young Af- African American kid and you fucking know at a young age you're going to be good at sports, you probably move towards the ones that you get paid multi million dollar checks every yeah, week. Yeah, you're not dumb, <laughs> and you're not you're not there in CrossFit yet. Um, and the other one was that that when they first kicked it off, no one wanted to tell the African American kids about CrossFit because they wanted to give the the skinny little white kids a chance to win at some stuff for a few years before <laughs> the rest of the world caught on. Which yeah. is a possibility too. You never know. Yeah, yeah, mate. absolutely. It could, be. it could be. It could be. And at the same time, they probably look at it and, like, like you said, they're like, "Fuck that! That's too much work. I'm going over here to play fucking basketball and have fun with my mates." Yeah. And then they get and paid get two fucking... million bucks a week. Yeah, <laughs> a minute. Um, yeah. Wow. But yeah, it's. You're yeah, yeah. It. Honestly, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they're just they're just waiting for the influx, and then there'll be the token yeah. white guy in the CrossFit Games. I guess we'll, we'll wait. I mean, if if it's a financial thing, that makes complete sense. If if there is, what's going on? Is, is that sorry? Okay, it sounded like someone was rustling feathers. Um, if if there is some kind of body composition makeup, that'd be fucking interesting to find out because demographics yeah. of fucking well, I mean, ethnic groups have been over time. Different ethnic groups have had more success in different sports. Um, CrossFit. It's, I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. I guess if it survives yeah. another 10 years of no glassmen around, we'll, we'll start to see diversity. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. <laughs> It'll be interesting. Yeah. One way or another, yeah. I, I feel like the Nike's back in the CrossFit athletes now. Reebok, who fucking knows what they're doing? They, they, they grow sports from nothing and then make them shit again five years later. <laughs> <laughs> that's true that's true Reebok's right contracts fuck sports up like yeah. I know they Reebok and CrossFit like they were two peas in a pod from the start um, yeah. and then it sounds like their contracting just fucks everything up and they tried to do the same to the UFC but yeah mate yeah everyone's gone away from well UFC are with Venom now aren't they oh uh, who knows it's too hard to follow yeah. I was just I was getting a laugh around UFC Dana White blowing up about the monster dude the other day after the fight so it was funny <laughs> they, they're so big now they don't really give a fuck what their sponsors say I think yeah, yeah, but yeah. no I think I think CrossFit as a sports it's too big to fail now whether or not the brand changes who knows but I think the world's realised it's fucking exciting to watch super fit people do shit that we can't normal mortal fucking humans can't actually do and I don't think it's going anywhere I think there'll be some form of CrossFit um, comps. Yeah, yeah, there'll be there'll forever. be something always. I think um, I think there's like for the people who run it, like the CrossFit Games. I think there's there's too much fucking money in it for them. For the athletes, is there too much money? Nah. Like if like if someone was to come to me and be like, righto, like a young kid was to come to me and be like, okay, I want to be the best in the world at CrossFit, or I want to be a competitor in CrossFit, and you're like, okay. Why are you doing it? Because of money? I'd be like, fuck you, mate. Go find a different Wrong sport. game, bro. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. go fucking play golf or tennis or something. Like, that's where your money is. But um, definitely for, like, the from the business standpoint of the CrossFit Games, like, it's $20 for the Open US. Everyone signs up for the Open. Like, there's fucking hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people who sign up for the Open. Like, they're fucking... Yeah, they're they're smart with what they do. They put their um their qualifying comps now now they're online, um and then they have an in person comp in each country that they don't fucking run. The the comp here runs, and then they just take three people, the top three people, to like to the games. Like it's 
the way they've marketed it and the way they run it is is smart because all they're doing is making bank like <laughs> um off every off doing fucking really nothing so um or mm-hmm. running the final comp at the end writing some workouts so yeah yeah it's a good business model yeah. <laughs> but I mean, they, they had to have the, the product itself had to be a winner to, to grow as quickly as it did. I mean, they, they tapped into more than just fitness. I mean, as you said, your, your gym at the moment, whatever label you give it now, it is a community for people. And that is what CrossFit did. They ticked. I mean, we, we were breaking down how to grow community or, or cult like following. And, and CrossFit's the perfect model to, to analyze. Yeah. It's like give, give people something that they can fucking compete in. Give them a tribe or a community and, and give them someone to fucking compete against. Um, education's in there at the start too, which, I mean, they did well at the start. They're like, here's this new form of fitness. Here's why it's good. We're going to educate you. And then you build a tribe around it. And that's when CrossFitters became like um, cult, like vegans <laughs> to go, I know some shit you don't. Therefore, I'm going to preach to you whether or not I just learned it 15 seconds ago or I've studied <laughs> it for 50 years. I'm going to, I'm going to tell the story like on yeah. fucking Jesus but they nailed it like they nailed the mo- the model and the marketing and thankfully they, they nailed the concept around a sport that's good for you and fucking little yeah. Yeah. to no brain damage apart from dropping fucking med balls on your head yeah med um, balls and mate I've seen oh there's been some that, like I've seen some injuries fuck I haven't I mean this is the only sport ever I think that I've had the least amount of injuries and all that like you get a sore back here and there but fuck that's the last of my worries like people worse than me um but yeah like and like you go into a workout in CrossFit and it's like you know what you know what's going to happen like um it's not like a rugby league field or a soccer field or AFL whatever where old Joe Blow next year runs into you and you fucking do your knee or dislocate your shoulder or like whatever like it, there's none of that like it's it's pretty controlled it's pretty con- like a controlled environment i guess like people get into crossfit and being like oh fuck crossfit's a physio sport and you're like yeah well you're fucking right um if you're competing like you're fucking that's all you do you live in a physio um, mm. you live in the massage room and all that sort of shit but um yeah only susie coming in doing a 10 minute workout and leaving like it's she like she doesn't need a physio. She's not doing anything crazy. Like she's just getting her heart rate up and catch you later. See you tomorrow. Uh, I did sixteen minutes the other day, mate. Did a CrossFit workout. <laughs> Rolled for the rest of the week. CrossFit. I was five, sixteen minutes. I was blowing. It was the hardest thing I ever did. You should have heard my internal dialogue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck! You should have heard my external dialogue, mate. I started with a camera in my fucking face. <laughs> you were competing against a one-legged man, and you got owned. <laughs> <laughs> You got my ass kicked. Mind you, he's a very man. fit one-legged man. Oh, but. fuck, mate. He's a, he's a freak. He's a freak, big poorly. Yeah. I've never seen anything like it. He thinks he's... He thinks... Uh, he was saying the other day, he's thinking about going and entering... He has. Oh, fuck. Yep, yep. Yeah, he's entered... So he's doing the Open. Um, so the Open has, like, um, different categories in it. Like, it has, um, like... Lower limb amputee and upper limb amputee and I think both as well. Um, and yeah, he's he's fucking mate. He's he's into it. He's never seen anything like it, mate. Like if someone's looking for inspiration, <laughs> come in to cross the towns at seven o'clock in the morning and you'll see it every morning. Like he's he's a freak. He's a freak. Pretty guy. Yeah. yeah, I mean we we shot. Um what did we shoot when we were up there? We shot some, some videos of you training like a fucking savage, videos of Wazza training like a savage, videos of Mex training, videos <laughs> of savage. <laughs> like, looking like a dying bull beast. Yeah. And then we, we got a program with Sean, um, Sean Allen. Have I fucked his name yeah, up? Yeah, That's yeah. right, yeah. Um, and and the, the programs he puts together for um, people with limbs missing or injuries. So we're going to start rolling all those out on socials over the next couple of weeks. But they were, f- yeah, it's, awesome. it's pretty inspirational. Like, one, watching you train was, um, I don't know if it's inspirational scary. or embarrassing to realise how unfit the rest <laughs> of us are. But but seeing people up there, like, there, there's a good vibe coming out of that gym. And, and it, like, some of the content we got was sick. So yeah, it'll be good yeah, to pump awesome. it up. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, no, mate. Shawnee does a great job here with those boys, like uh, Paulie, Coco. 
I'll go, he's got a whole list of like vets that he and mate there. That's yeah, insane. Insane. Right, good. No, mate, it's good to see what what's come. It is an absolute community. Even the couple of days we were up there, you saw people sitting in the coffee shop and yeah, they love uh, it, mate. chatting they love and it. working out and staying around afterwards and gobbing off and good vibes, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah, mate. Um, yeah, it's good. Like, everyone here, they're, like, everyone's your mate. Like, um, do you get some fuckwits? Of course you do. Like, you get fuckwits everywhere. Um, but I would say 99.9% of the people that roll through here, you're like, fuck, you're a good bloke or you're a good chick and, um, and yeah, it's, yeah, it, it just works, mate. It's a good place to be. Like, you see people when you come in, like, they fucking love it. They sit around all day and do some, do fucking five pull-ups every hour and have a chat to everyone and they're, they're here for the whole day and they're just hanging out and you're like, fuck, what, do you fucking work or what? And they're like, no, I just fucking, I just love the gym. This is my day off. I'm like, fuck you, go home. <laughs> like, um, but yeah, and like you see that through all gyms, mate. People just love, love being in the gym, love the community, and it's yeah, it's it's great. And that's, I guess, the whole method behind CrossFit is have people who are similar minded in the same room, and you're pretty much good to go. So, yeah. Fucking sick, man. What's so? What's going on next for you? What What's the next big big hurdles for? Oh uh, well, the open starts the tomorrow. Um, so no, Friday the twelfth uh, is like our first round of qualifying as such. So um, that'll go for three weeks. So this Friday, next Friday, and the Friday after will be when I'll do the workouts. Um, and it's it's different like this year so there's like the open which is another online comp that everyone does um and you like compete against everyone in the world but it's top 600 or top 10 percent from your country for us it's 600 at this stage um we'll go to the online qualifier which is another qualifier um so those 600 will compete against each other and then top 30 from that will go to an in-person comp down in brizzy that's regionals and then Top three from that will go to the games. So, yeah. Fuck yeah! And what's sorry? What's the dates for regionals? Because we got like I said, we've, there's a few companies that that want to have a sniff that throwing some stuff at you. I think um, it's I think it's June. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I have to be. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure. But June-ish. Yeah, I want to know. Yeah, yeah June. We will be there as long as it doesn't overlap with the thing, and we've got to be. Watching blokes ride motorbikes in in the Northern Territory. Hopefully it doesn't. Surely the fucking CrossFit Games organisers would have cleared it with the Fink Surely. before they scheduled it. Surely. <laughs> um, but other than that, we'll we'll be there with fucking bells on, bro. Sounds It'll good. Be good. Sounds good. Eating pizzas and drinking beers from the side. Awesome. Line. Awesome. I'll join you once it's done. <laughs> <laughs> Gold, mate. Thanks for coming on, and um, we'll uh, we'll stay on comms, and I think we've managed to wrangle up some. Uh, some sponsorship to make being the fittest man in Australia <laughs> profitable for once, mate. Yeah, fuck him. you beauty. Thanks, boys. <laughs> <laughs> you got a, I saw you got a you got a sub sponsor the other day. Was that? Do you yeah, mate. Out, they, or do we do we keep that quiet? Um, for yeah, revival. So no, no, I can give them a shout out. Revival. Um, yeah, they just jumped on board. They were like, mate, they're. So when I first got into CrossFit, it was sort of like. Um, fuck, I need sponsorship, and I just sort of, like, just rolled out, but, um, now as I've done it more and more, I just, I'm after fucking good people, like, I just want good blokes, good people to hang out with, talk shit with, um, and, and, mate, he called me, and he's like, hey, man, um, we're a supplement company, we're from, we started in Cairns, now we're in Brizzy, what are your thoughts, you want to come on board? I was like, like tell me more and he rattled off all, all the stuff that like his plans and his whole model model that he's shaping his business around and all that and I was like fuck man you're on the money here like let's let's roll with this and yeah if he just like they just seem like a good company good people to be around good people to talk to so um yeah it just it just worked out so and then I got again faster as well they're the same um all the people at again faster there they're rock solid, like they, like you can talk shit with them, they're like a bunch of blokes you can go for beers with and all that, and then I got a uh, four-time, which is like 
sweatbands and grips and all that so I don't fuck my hands up. Um, and yeah, they're great people as well. Like, yeah, it's yeah, it's awesome. And then yeah. Fit Aid as well. Fit Aid is fuck yeah. Uh, Hayden and Hayden and Michelle there. Mate, I've I've had some big nights with Hayden, and that straight away to me is like, oh fuck, right? Yeah, you're a good bloke. Let's go. Um, so yeah. That is the old-fashioned business. Do you want to be yeah. sponsored by these people? Well, let's go and hit the piss and we'll find out. <laughs> See, fucking hell, it should be done. Test, mate. No, it 100%. Yeah. It's none of this getting managers to, to do deals offline. It's like, no, 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 let's have a beer together. Mate, if you're that's a fuck how it started. Week, I don't want anything to do with your brand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's how it started and then, yeah. yeah it's good, mate. It's good. Go. Cool, boys. All right, mate. We'll stay around, mate, and we'll um, get this all pumped out. It's fucking good seeing you on, mate, and for the rest of Australia, fittest man in Australia. We'll see him at the regionals, see him at the uh, at the games, and hopefully we'll uh, we get to see you too, mate. Yeah. Thanks, boys. Cheers, mate. Cheers. Cheers. One sec. See you, mate. All good. Just going to wait for everyone.